Good morning, EMF Jacksonville, all of my sailors and Marines, their families, and all of my friends who are watching in on this divine worship service this morning. I want to invite you to worship a great God that loves you and gives you all the blessings that uh, he just wants to pour into your life. So this morning, this weekend is the 4th of July weekend, and I hope that you and your family are celebrating it in a relaxing way. You're celebrating freedom because we have that great right to be free and to enjoy a lifestyle of freedom in this nation. And that comes through the sacrifice of others. Uh, and so that's where we're going to go this morning in our Bible study. We're going to look at the sacrifices of freedom, both in Old Testament and definitely in the New Testament through our Savior, Jesus Christ. So this morning, I just want to share that with you. I hope that you are experiencing some great things in your life, some great encounters that God is blessing you with. And I know I am as well. So this morning, I just want you to understand there are three elements to worship. One is prayer, and I want to start out with a word of prayer for you, your family, wherever you're at. Maybe you need some very focused prayer, and I would love to uh, pray for you in that regard. Uh, and if you want to, you can hit me on uh, social media. You can email me. You can call me if you have my numbers, uh, and we will uh, we'll pray with you. I know Senior Chief Munoz, our, uh, our uh, you know, religious specialist is working as well to pray for you every day for those of you that are coming home from mobilizations for those of you that are stepping off to go to deployments i want you to know that we're praying for you every day uh, for your safety and for the family's safety as you were gone so please uh, please know that so the first element is prayer we should give everything we can we should be a conversation and I know that in a couple of weeks I'm gonna be teaching uh, a couple of series components on specific prayer we're gonna look at it from God's Word and how prayer is a conversation between you and God it's a it's a everlasting conversation that you have and so when I pray I do it in a variety of different ways most of the time it's conversational most of the time I'm just kind of uh, it's as if God is just that that physical presence with me and we have these debates we have these conversations I beg him for forgiveness for my sin I talk to him about certain experiences when I have downtime I I you know just pray to him all the time I also have a prayer journal that I write uh, notes and things in just getting it out on paper sometimes that helps me express it a little bit better and to understand what I'm really asking for in, in that regard so just understand that uh, I have called out many of my friends to a 40 day of prayer uh, in social media based on the situations in our country and how we're how we're progressing and so I just called you out to do 40 days of prayer focused in on healing and a forgiveness and of strength and comfort and boldness that we can gain from God so the first thing about worship is prayer the second thing about worship is just singing and praising God in a musical fashion God has just given us so many great talents and abilities to worship him and so I encourage you to listen to music if you do like I do I love listening to music get in the truck and listen to music all the time listen to it in the apartment or at the house even in my workshop when I'm uh, just tinkering away on uh, different things I've got music playing in the background because it just sets my mind in the right focus and so I just encourage you to do that get with a local body of believers who are worshiping together in song and in music and just experience that Some great songwriters have given us beautiful beautiful melodies and lyrics to point us to God and the third element we're going to look at today especially is opening up God's Word and understanding his word and seeing how he speaks to us and how he teaches us and prepares us for the things he wants us to so that's what we're gonna look at this morning I want to start out with a word of prayer for us for you in this regard and especially for our nation during these times of a pandemic and of a lot of chaos and crisis going on in bigger cities and states so I want to just pray for you in that regard so let's have a word of prayer holy God thank you for who you are today You've given us blessings beyond understanding. We don't even, we can't even count all the blessings you've given us. I praise you for my sailors and my Marines. I thank you for their lives. You've breathed life into them so that they would have a purpose for you. And I pray that they will find that purpose and they'll live that purpose to the fullest every moment of every day. 
that they get. I pray for their families. I pray for the ones that are home, that are struggling with different issues. And I ask you to just bless them. Father, I don't have to know the problems and the struggles and the complications of each individual that I'm praying for. I just know that I have faith in you to take care of all the needs. I ask your blessings upon my sailors, my Marines, and their families. For the ones that are deployed, I pray for their safety. I pray that you just be with them, whether they're in Bahrain, whether they're in Afghanistan, whether they're on ship, whether they're here in the States, in other places. I ask you to bless them and keep them safe. God, bless this time as we gather together via video to worship you, experience your word, and to be challenged to be men and women of faith for you. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So this morning, this weekend is July 4th, and I am so excited. I love July 4th. It's a great way to celebrate uh, you know, our independence from the tyrannies of another country and how we broke away and we decided to become a sovereign nation on our own. And so that is the great theme for this. And I know that in our, our, our climate today, we're struggling with a lot of that mindset with several people. And so just pray for them. Pray for their hearts to be right, to be humbled, but to do things in the right way. And that's what I want to encourage you to be uh, an encouraging component of that. But this morning, I just want to, the title of this, this message is Sacrifices for Freedom. And so just to think about that, being in the uniform just inspires me to understand how much freedom I have and what sacrifice it took. So just to think about that, I want to give you some numbers in, in dealing with that. The sacrifices to have our freedom in this nation came at a high cost. The high cost of bloodshed and of warfare and of lives. And so just to give you kind of a, an understanding of how much sacrifice occurs. These are numbers from uh, past wars that the United States military has been in. These are the numbers of combatants killed in combat, military individuals killed in combat. Now, I know there's a lot of other numbers going on there of how many were not combated and they were not in combat but died, civilians, family members, and all that. But these are just the numbers to think through of military members in the uniform in combat in these conflicts who lost their lives. So the Civil War, if we go all the way back to the Civil War for our nation, we had 214,938 military members in combat killed for freedom. World War I, we had 53,402 members killed in combat. World War II, 219,557. Korea, 33,800 or 686 military members killed in combat. Vietnam, 47,424. The Gulf War, 149 killed in combat during that short uh, duration. Iraq, the war on Iraq, 30. 836, 3,836. And then currently, the war on Afghanistan, which is still going on, is 1,833. That totals up from the dates of 1775 to current uh, today is 666,441. United States military killed in combat. And I know there's a lot of other numbers out there, but that is a big sacrifice. Each one, not just 666,000, but each individual paid a price for America to have their freedom and other countries to have their freedom as well. So think through that. Wow, that is an incredible aspect. I, I pull it all the way back to the sacrifices that we have and the freedoms that we've gained through those sacrifices. How incredible. Even to think about it from a dad perspective, and I have two beautiful boys and other children that are in my home, and so often I have sacrificed as a parent for their well-being. Sometimes it's the simple thing of swapping vehicles. They wanted the better vehicle to go out on a date, and I sacrificed that weekend so that they could have the better vehicle uh, that they wanted for a weekend experience or a date. 
Maybe it's as simple as, and I've seen my wife do this all the time, of we've ordered food and have our children sitting there and they want the french fries. And so we sacrifice, I know that sounds real simple, but to allow them to have uh, the things that they want, which are right, uh, we sacrifice as parents. How often we don't think about that, and I wanna just share this kind of statement. Um, you know, most of the time we don't understand the sacrifice of someone else until after we've been given the freedom uh, because of that sacrifice and most of the time we don't even acknowledge that sacrifice For me being in this uniform and for me being a military member every day I think about the sacrifices that men and women have and still do put their you know put in to give me the freedom that I have but you know what there's another side to this as well there's the the you know the aspects of being oppressed why do we why do we need freedom well we need freedom because we're oppressed in some way, form, or fashion. And I know that in, in our popular culture right now, we've heard that so much, that there's oppression going on. And yes, I know there is. But in the past, there's been greater oppression. But even today, we have an eternal oppression as well. So what happens is we need freedom because we're oppressed. We are held back. We are, are enslaved, if you could, to something, we're in bondage for something uh, that has, has, has going on. So often we hear about people that are addicted to drugs and alcohol, and they're in bondage because that chemical change in their life has changed them and made them a, you know, a slave or bonded to having the dependency and the addiction to that chemical and they can't break free and it takes so much for them to have to break free of that kind of aspect. But you know what, even in the Bible it talks about that we need to be set free. One of the scriptures that I love is Galatians and this is the kind of the platform scripture that we have for today. Galatians 1, chapter 1, verse 4 and it says this, and this is the letter that Paul is writing to the church at, you know, and, and the people in the church of Galatia and so there he's he's writing them and he starts out in his uh, kind of salutation with this he says grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself and that's referring to Jesus himself it says and who gave himself for our sin that we may be delivered from the present evil age according to his will to the will of God the Father what a beautiful passage and I know that it doesn't sound like a whole lot but there's so much meat in that one passage you see we right now live in an evil age just as they did back 2,000 plus years ago when Jesus walked on this earth and Jesus came to give freedom from the bondage of evil age and of sin we are oppressed by our sin nature. There was only one moment in time of this earthly world that there was no sin and Adam and Eve were in perfect form and then they sinned by eating the forbidden fruit and they became oppressed to an evil age and to their sin. And so from that moment forward, if you look at the Old Testament, there was always a means to get people back to a holy state or a closely holy state with God in that relationship. And it required a blood sacrifice. You look at that, it took time over the nation of Israel. They would have to go and they'd have to get an unblemished lamb and they would have to sacrifice it on the altar to wipe away the sins of the individual, of the, of the family, the community, and even the nation. It took that progression and then we fast forward up to the New Testament. We knew, God knew what he was doing. He knew that there was no way that an, that, uh, you know, an earthly creature could ultimately give us perfect uh, you know, freedom from the bondage of our sin. And so he gave his son, Jesus. What a beautiful picture of sacrifice for our freedom that we have sacrifice for our freedom that we have sin keeps us from eternal freedom 
that sin that we have in our lives. I am a sinful person. I'm broken. I am the worst of the worst, and I can tell you that. And I keep sinning. It's not just because I have a cross on my collar that stops me from sinning. It stops me from doing dumb and stupid things, the wrong things that God wants me to do. No, I continually do that. But Jesus came and paid the ultimate price for my freedom. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. He was the perfection of God in human form. He was that perfect sacrifice that gives me the freedom to step into heaven when I leave this earthly world through the salvation that he gave. All those blood sacrifices of the Old Testament weren't going to do it. That was a mechanism, yes, but the perfection of sacrifice came through Jesus Christ. Imperfection is what I am, and that's what holds me and bonds me and makes me a slave. It's the sin that I have. The continual sin. Some of my sins I've been able to kind of set off to the side and I don't do those anymore. But some of them still manifest themselves in me and in you. And I want you to know that you can have freedom from that sin. You can have freedom through the sacrifice. See, it takes a sacrifice. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life. The gift. That's what a sacrifice is. It's giving away all those men and women, 666,000 military members gave their lives for freedom over countless years and decades. It was a gift. They knew going in. They knew that, okay? Most of the time when I sacrifice as a daddy, I know going into it that I give that as a gift. I don't ask for it back. I don't ask for them to repay me for the sacrifice that I've given for the french fries or for the gasoline or for whatever. It's a gift that I've given them. So you have to understand that that gift comes from God. That gift, understanding that sin separates the human man and the human woman from freedom of eternal life. There's no way we can get into heaven without a sacrifice. And that sacrifice has to come through perfection. That perfection is Jesus, his son, in you know, just giving of his life. He lived 33 years perfect. And then he died on a cross for our sin. Like I said, the wages of sin is death from the scriptures. That wage was paid in a sacrifice, perfect sacrifice, by Jesus on the cross. And then he rose again on the third day, breaking the bonds of sin and shame, breaking the, the, you know, the, the, the chains that hold so many of us back. But it's a gift. It is a beautiful, beautiful gift. We don't understand it until after the fact, and that's where, uh, that's where we're at. At what price? Think about that. At what price does freedom come? At what price does freedom come? I referenced just a minute ago the, the bondage of drug addiction. And so many people weigh their, their price of getting well or getting better or stopping. And they weigh that out. And sometimes they just decide, those individuals decide, you know what, it's not worth the price to go into detox, to go into treatment, to, to step away from all of this. It's not worth the price of feeling that high uh, that they get from being addicted and taking those drugs. And they choose the other side of it. What's the price for freedom? Eternal freedom. That price was death on the cross for our sin by Jesus. So the question that I want to leave you with is very simple. What's the price that you have to gain freedom from your sin? I've already said that you have sin just like I do, and that sin separates us from an eternal freedom in heaven with Jesus as our Savior and Lord and with God the Father. So what's the price? Is it living uh, the lifestyle that you have? You say, hey, you know what? I don't want to live that way anymore that separates me? Is it uh, addictions? Is it whatever? Is it following your own path and not following God? What is, what's that price? Because the ultimate price was given by Jesus. Now you have to decide, what do I want to do to change, to gain that gift of eternal life? So it's that simple. 
It's that simple. Your sac the sacrifice for your sin and for your eternal life has already been paid. Now you have to receive that gift of eternal life into your heart and into your mind. I did that more than 30 years ago on June 28th, 1986. When I realized I was a sinner, when I realized that I couldn't get into heaven on my own, and that the things that I was doing were wrong. And so on that night, it was a Saturday night at about nine o'clock, I realized that and I realized that Jesus had paid the sacrifice for my freedom. I just needed to receive it. It's that simple. And if you want more about that, I pray that you would contact me, contact Senior Chief Munoz, and let us talk to you and work with you on gaining that freedom. Maybe it's as simple as just you just confessing your sin and giving your life to Christ. Maybe it's doing that and then deciding, hey, I'm going to live a different lifestyle. I want to be a different person. Because when you ask God into your heart and gain that freedom from sin, he will change you and make you a new creation. I pray that you understand that. I pray that you celebrate freedom today, this weekend, and every day because of the sacrifices of men and women, not only in our military, but in our personal lives. And I hope that this has been a blessing to you. Let me pray and close us out and understand that sacrifice always produces the freedom that we have. So let's pray. Holy God, thank you for today, the opportunity to gather with my friends, my sailors, my Marines, and their families, to pray with them, to worship with them, to experience you with them. I pray that we've been blessed this morning. I pray that you have touched someone's life and you have changed their lives for an eternity. I ask you to continue to watch care over us, keep us safe, keep us focused, and allow us to witness your greatness. And it's in Jesus' beautiful, holy name that I pray. Amen. Have a great Navy morning.